A very warm welcome to you here on this episode of Strengthened. I am so delighted to be joined by the beautiful and exceptionally talented Wendy Griffith, CBN's anchor, senior reporter and co-host of The 700 Club. Wendy has travelled internationally covering stories like the hostage drama of missionaries Martin and Gracia Burnham in the Philippines and the 2006 war between Israel and Hezbollah in northern Israel. She has also travelled to the Middle East for an in-depth look at the plight of Syrian refugees who escaped from their war-torn country to find refuge in Jordan. Bold and beautiful, she is quite the adventurer, an avid hiker that has climbed not just figurative but literal mountains like Kilimanjaro. In this episode, we talk all things faith, love and more about her new book, you didn't miss it. God's best is worth the wait. Hi Wendy, it's so wonderful to be with you again. It's been a while. The last time we did this, it was like the, the brink of COVID and it was so different. So thank God we are in different times now. Goodness. Yeah. Yes, thank God. And also this is your debut on UCB Ireland. So I'm so excited about that. Wow. I love Ireland. I love that Irish accent. I love every, and I've never been to Ireland. Well, you know, well, we need you here. Maybe you can do a book signing book or something here. I've been to England. I've been to Wales and mm -hmm. I've been to England, but yeah. I've never been to Ireland. So. Well, you must come. And do you know what? It's so great because there's such a strong connection between the US and Ireland that mm. we actually have at the airport here in Dublin. It's like a mini America. Wow. And you go in and you get like your passport checked and everything so that you don't have that when you go to the States. And there's like a picture of the president and all the staff is American. So yeah, mm -hmm. you'd, you'd be very welcome here anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, the last time we spoke, we spoke about your first book, your prize to be won. And I mentioned just what a blessing that had been to me in my life. It had spoken to me. It was a great word in season. And I've actually read it twice. And both times, it just had wow. such a great effect. And one of my best friends, Rachel, who I told you last about last time as well, she was really blessed by the book too. And she was telling me recently, actually, that because she knows this the second book is coming out very soon and actually it would have come out by the time the third so that's so exciting and she decided to read the book again just in prep for it sort of thing and yeah and she was saying how much it blessed her and it spoke differently to her this time which is really cool because i find like the bible does that every time every time you read it yeah. there's something new so yes. thank you for comparing my book to the bible you're I appreciate very that. welcome yeah <laughs> well there is a lot of scripture i i love to use scripture because you know that god says it won't return void and it'll accomplish what it's set out for so i love using scripture in uh, in my books yeah absolutely and somebody you mentioned in the book um with so, such admiration was the late great Pat Robertson and mm -hmm. what a blessing and inspiration he had been to you. So I've got to ask, how is the family doing? How is the CBN family doing since he's you know, it was to heaven? It was tough, but we had such a great send off for him. Mm -hmm. uh, it was such a celebration of life. And there were several services, but this one in particular, uh, it ended with this song that was um, as this when the saints go marching in yeah. and it was just kind of very celebratory so we know Pat's in a better place I miss him so much I just miss his energy I miss being on the set with him I miss our I miss our conversations you know um, he was a spiritual dad to me yeah uh, Pat is one of a kind and I don't think he can ever be replaced but as they say, the show must go on and he would want that. And so the show is going on and we're doing the best we can without him. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, you continue to be in our thoughts and prayers and it's exciting to know how the legacy carries on. And that's just so amazing, such a lasting legacy. 
Well, I'm really excited because we'll be talking about your new book, the prequel to the one that we just spoke about. This so one? it is, that's <laughs> it. But before we do, I've got to ask you, because it's my favorite question to ask everyone that I interview, especially on UCB Island. How did you come to know Jesus? How did it start? Where did, where did the story start? We'd love to know. Okay, first of all, I thought you were going to ask me, how's married life? It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> but it doesn't amazing. compare to knowing Jesus. That's where Jesus is still first. <laughs> He's my first love. Um, how did I come to know Jesus? It was, I was in my 20s, and I'm in my 50s now, but I, I knew him as a little girl. I mean, I went to church camp. I was a card-carrying member. Um, I had a Jesus is the Way card in my purse. And I, I knew all the books of the Bible, but it became real. Jesus became real. I was born again in my 20s, in my mid to late 20s. Okay, wow. Um, you know, I, I think I've always known God was there, and I've always believed in Jesus. But there's a difference than you know, getting it from here down to here mm -hmm. in, into where you say, okay, Jesus, come into my heart. I was in my late 20s when I did that. Mm -hmm. And then immediately I wanted to get baptized. Mm -hmm. um, and I started, you know, I was in, I was in secular news. I was at an NBC affiliate, but I, I found myself looking for stories with a Christian uh, or a spiritual nature and and that's what you know God was preparing me to come to CBN so uh, yeah it was it was a little bit of a process Jesus was kind of wooing me and then yeah. um, I find them like okay God I'm in you know I'm all in that's fantastic and what was it like was there a defining moment or was it just like a gradual there wasn't a defining mo moment, yeah. Beverly, and I wish there was because it would be easier <laughs> to tell the story, but it was yeah. like, you know, I just, God was wooing me. It took it took a few years, and mm -hmm. and I was watching certain people that I knew were Christians, that I knew were believers, and I, I was like, wow, there, there's something different about them, and I, I like how they are, and, and then, you know, going to church, and then seeing my sister get saved, and and quoting scripture, and, and I'm like, what is that about? And then, so it took me... A little bit of time mm -hmm. but I'm telling you it was it was it was nobody was beating me over the head with the Bible it was God himself wooing me and letting me get to the end of myself like getting to the point where I'm like okay I can't do this alone I can't you know my TV crew was just blooming and I was overwhelmed and I was you know kind of freaking out like you know having panic attacks I was like God I need you you know where are you so he showed up in a big way and then several years later, I found out about this baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that was a game changer. So I, yeah, that just never looked back. Yeah, never looked back. Wow, that's and that's incredible, and that's so encouraging because every Christian story is different, and I'm sure there's lots of listeners listening in today, and they find themselves in that same place where they feel Jesus tugging at their heart, um, yeah. and maybe it's just that last bit of encouragement that they need before they can fully surrender to him so thank you for sharing that and then you spoke about journalism and you spoke about how you were you know you were in secular news before that you're so beautiful and you're so talented i really believe you could have picked any job that you wanted and you would uh -huh. have been successful so why journalism and why broadcasting oh i was a little girl when i was like I want to be that lady on TV. I mean, it was really that profound. That absolutely was my my thought process in my career choice. Now, do I think God was guiding that? Yes. Yeah. And do I think that my dad, you know, seeing my dad, how much he liked to watch the news, was that a factor? Probably. So the Lord, from a young age, um, seeing the local anchor woman in Knoxville, Tennessee, at the mall yeah. in person interviewing this family, I'm like. That's it, done. And I thought everybody was, I thought everybody knew what they wanted to do, yeah. like from the age of 10. And then I found out later I was the weird one. No, not at all. I'd say that's so good because that's, I wish I had that because I think those who know what they want from an early age, like that's, they, they've got this great mindset and then they're just going for it. Whereas those who are like, oh, well, this looks nice, that looks nice. It takes a while before they actually find their ground. But by then, people like yourself, you're already in your career, <laughs> you know, a number of years in. So, no, that's yeah. great. Well, that you have that I just like to say that you 
need to be on TV on a regular basis somewhere. And I'm praying that for you, Beverly. You have the beauty and the grace and the and the skill, the interviewing skills and the spirit. And uh, there's no way God is going to hide uh, waste that talent. So um, I just pray that in Jesus' name, and and I pray that everyone who's listening to me will will. We'll pray you on to the big screen somewhere. <laughs> oh, thank you, Wendy. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Um, okay, well, there's another question. I, when I was preparing for this, I was like, I need to ask Wendy this. <laughs> and that's basically us ladies, we look at you and we think, oh my gosh, goals. Like, she's so vibrant. She's so beautiful. And like, there's this sense of vitality that oozes out of you. So what are your beauty secrets? Spit it out, girl. We need to know. How do you, how do you stay this mm. way? Well, I love to sleep. Okay. And I love coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I just had the most delicious latte. I'm sort of a latte fanatic. I like to take pictures of my coffee and then post them. But um, that's so sweet of you. You know, I'll tell you, and I, I literally know this is true. So you can take this beauty secret to the bank free of charge. Prayer. You spend five minutes, 10 minutes, or the, the more time you spend in prayer, say before you have a photo shoot or whatever you gotta do, or just begin your day, or you just wanna look good in general, prayer, I can just see the difference in my face. I'm like, oh, I see Jesus now, you know? Whereas before I'm like, I look tired. Um, so that is really the best beauty secret. And uh, of course, I always have some water nearby. Very good, mm. cheers to that. Um, I don't know why, I'm just always thirsty, um, but I, you know, all the years in broadcasting, I always make sure I have water nearby because that's good for your voice and it's good for your skin, but thank you, that's my, my secret. That is a great secret and thank you for sharing it with us because we need to hear it and it's so true, I'd agree with you 100%, like I get that from my mom a lot, like say, I've been praying and I come out and she's like, you know, you're looking so good. And I was like, I've been praying. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's true. I mean, you know, it really, really is true. 100%. And okay. he says, and what does the Lord say? He says, I'll make you radiant. And he says, God says, I will beautify you with, with my presence. Yeah. You know? And so, especially on those days where I'm like really super tired and I'm like, you know, Lord, please beautify me with your presence because I got nothing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, awesome okay well let's get to it then your new book you didn't miss it god's best one. is worth the wait that's the one tell us all about it i'm a little bit giddy because it's coming out um in a couple days and uh you know beverly you read my first book you are price v1 yeah. this is the sequel this is the happy ending. This is the book that the readers of You Are Prize to Be One asked for. Now you can read the standalone, no problem at all, because I kind of do a little recap, you know, like they do on Netflix and they give you the recap for every episode. But I'm so excited because you know this is the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. And and so many women I mean, I, I dedicate this book to the readers of my first book and of course to the Lord and to my husband but because they're the ones who made this book happen they asked me for it mm -hmm. and I'm so excited to tell them the rest of the story okay. and it's not just the love story but that's in there it's about those years of waiting between the, my first book came out which I dedicated to my future husband and I said I know you'll be worth the wait that was kind of like staking a claim right and, and going out on a limb so to speak because i'm like okay god you got to come through for me now i just dedicated a, this book to my future husband who, who was still from the time it came out in 2014 three and a half years away mm -hmm. all right what do you do for three and a half years you wait so i talk a lot about waiting in the book and how not to give up hope while you're waiting mm -hmm. wow that's wonderful and I've got to ask you about the wonderful Bill because you have met other guys you've dated and what was it about Bill that really made you know, okay, he's the one? Yeah, so when I first laid eyes on him, well, of course, I'd seen a picture and I thought he was cute, but I first laid eyes on him, I'm like, oh, I know, he's nice. I mean, it wasn't love at first sight, mm -hmm. but there was a peace, you know, it was, a, it was very peaceful. We had great conversation. Uh, we were on a double date. My friend Jenna had fixed fixed it up, and her, and her friend Will knew Bill, 
So we all knew, you know, they knew each other and I had not met Bill. So we had a couple of um, double dates with them and then we didn't see each other though. Like after that first date, we didn't see each other for a month. But I mean, honestly, looking back, it was such a gift that it wasn't love at first sight because Beverly, I'm an all or nothing girl. And like, if I, if it had been like fireworks and oh my gosh, I got to marry this guy. He would have run for the hills, you know, run for the hills. And I would have been just standing there like, what happened? God didn't allow me to know. Thank you, Jesus, because this allowed Bill to pursue me Mm -hmm. and it allowed and, and that's a gift to a man. They are created to go on the hunt. My, my husband's a hunter, which I love when he comes back from hunting and he just smells like the woods and it just seems so masculine and he's wearing camo. I mean, come on, it doesn't get much better than that, right? So <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, so it's a gift to let the man pursue you because that's what he's created to do. Mm-hmm. And then it's a gift to us to be pursued because it allows our heart to just kind of slowly open and be like and then the light bulb you know comes on so we dated uh you know several months uh before the light bulb officially came on but that was enough time to let him pursue me and so i just you know i'm so glad (laughs) that that i didn't know right away so if you're i think a lot of us are and, and even when i was younger i would be like nah don't feel it i'm not feeling it you know i don't feel a spark Give it time, let it breathe, Mm -hmm. you know, because you don't not, you know, let it, let God work. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so yes, the wonderful bill. Yeah, that's very sound advice. And yes, in the book, we can get that wonderful advice and we will. But for the listener today who is in that same position, they're waiting for the right guy to come at the right time and they're waiting for God's best, but also the clock is ticking and they're like, when is he showing up? What is your advice? What is your word of encouragement as a sister? All right, well, first of all, don't panic. Um, You know, don't settle, whatever you do, because then you'll be miserable. Stay close to God, stay in his word. I I would would say, okay, God, you're not giving me a boyfriend. Right now, you're not giving me a husband. Give me another mountain to climb. Mm -hmm. And I, I climbed my first big mountain, Kilimanjaro, when I was 50. Wow. And I still hadn't met my husband. I'm like, okay, God, give me another mountain to climb. Because I was really enjoying, uh, you know, this new hobby I picked up, these high elevation climbs. And I did Everest base camp and saw Everest, you know, with my own eyes. And I mean, I didn't go to, I didn't go up to Everest. I went to base camp and a little bit farther, but I did a Machu Picchu, um, the Inca Trail of Machu Picchu. And then uh, a little bit later, I did uh, the Tour de Mount Blanc, which was uh, fabulous. I mean, they were all fabulous, but, you know, enjoy my, my advice is mm-hmm. enjoy your singleness, pursue your passions mm-hmm. because your passions and when you're just going about your everyday life and doing what you love, that's probably what's going to lead you somewhere to your husband. And that's what happened to me. So I'm, I'm hiking. I mean, this book is full of adventure. Okay. okay. I was hiking with Jenna in Peru in the summer, in June of 2017. And you know, you got all day, you're up there on the mountain and I'm like, she's single, I'm single. So what do we start talking about? Men, boys, guys, not boys, men. And I'm like, Jenna, you know so many people. When we get back to Virginia Beach, you gotta fix me up because I'm not meeting anybody at work. I'm not meeting anybody at church. I'm not meeting anyone at the grocery store, you know? And she was like, sure, I, I can do that. And she had someone in mind, I could tell. So when we got back, just like a week later, we're down at the beach and I meet Bill for the first time. So don't be afraid to reach out to your friends because, um, you know, sometimes they can be a great asset in matchmaking. Now, not all of them, but, you know, um, now my sister, she met her husband on Match.com and he is a fantastic guy and she's been happily married for 14 years. And they have like, I mean, to me, they're just a match made in heaven. God used Match.com. I God, I felt the, the Lord didn't want me to do um, online, probably because I'm in media and it would have been weird. And but if uh, so, I'm so God can do it. God can bring your mate a million different ways, you know. But don't be afraid to be open to being fixed up. Mm-hmm. 
So that's a really sound advice. Well guys, make sure you get your copy. It's available on Amazon and all good book retailers, I'm guessing, Wendy, is that right? Yes, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. And if you want the pre-story, then you need to read Viewer you Price to be one to. first. Yes. And then, but you don't have to because this is a standalone. Yes. And this is the new one. You don't have to in that way, but take it from me, yes. guys. You have to. It's so terrific. But I just want to say, don't, you know, God has best. Whoever's, if you're still single and you're so tired of waiting, I totally get that. I've got chapters. I've got a whole chapter called, you know, uh, it's, it's worth the wait. And, um, and lots of scriptures to hold on to and and it's great to have that praying friend that you can call and say this is you know so hard this waiting and i had a friend like that yeah. who would always give me psalm 84 11 and that is that god will not withhold any good thing from those who are walking uprightly and also psalm 37 4 you know god mm -hmm. god says delight yourself in me and i will give you the desires of your heart those are promises that you, you know, if you activate, if you believe them, and and I believed them. I said, Lord, I know your word is true. I know you're going to bring me a husband, even though I'm over 50 and the world says it's too late for me. The world says, you know, you've got a 2.3% or 0.0%, not zero, but 0.1% chance of finding a mate. I found the perfect mate for me. And uh, he's not perfect, but he's perfect for me. And I think he would say the same about me, I hope, um, after almost five years of marriage, we're coming up on five years of marriage in February, which I can't believe it's like going too fast. But I just want to encourage those who are waiting because I know what it's like to wait. Mm -hmm. And God is faithful in the waiting and he's with you in the waiting and just hold on to the Lord because it will happen. Look, if he can put the sun and the planets and the stars in orbit mm -hmm. and, and it's perfect, right? He can surely bring your spouse across your path. And right before I met Bill, I was standing in my, because I used to ponder that. I used to think, God, you know, how, how easy it would be for you because you did all that, you know, and I'm, I love stargazing. And, and right before I met Bill, I saw the most stunning uh, shooting star in my uh, neighborhood, in my sky. And I just happened to look up at the right time. And it was just like, God, you're bringing my husband soon. I just knew it, you know? And it was like a month later. And so I knew that God was going to do it, but you got to stay in faith. Stay. God gets the frustration, but just stay close to him because he wants to give you his very best. He's a good father. Amen. Stay close to him because he wants to give you his best words of wisdom, Mendy. Thank you so much. And guys, make sure you check it out. Amazon, wherever books are sold, you didn't miss it. God's best is worth the wait. Thank you so much, Mendy. God bless you. Oh, so great to see you, Beverly. Likewise. Cheers from Virginia. God bless you. <laughs>